Hey guys, Greg Benz here. One thing I love in my photographs is an explosively colorful sunrise or sunset. And a great way to bring out specific colors in your image is with the HSL tool, the Hue Saturation Lightness tool in both Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. They both have uh, slightly different versions of this tool, but both let you pick a particular color and adjust the saturation. The problem is that both of these tools, if you don't use them correctly, can create color banding, meaning that a sky is not one color. It's not just yellow or orange, or it's a range of colors. It's a rainbow of colors, and it's a very smooth transition from one to the next in the original photograph. If I over adjust one area relative to the areas around it, you get these hard, weird edges that show that you photoshopped the image. It doesn't look very nice, and that's called color banding. And I'll show that to you in just a second. Let's first jump into Lightroom and take a look at this image that I captured in coastal California. The original untouched raw looked like this. So it's properly exposed to the right. The sky colors look kind of washed out, but they're not blown out. The shadow detail is available, but it's pretty dark. So what I did is bring down the exposure, bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows and that sort of compressed the dynamic range. So we have more of the color in the sky and more of the detail in the foreground. And so already we brought up a lot more color in this image, but I'd like to push it a little bit further in a more natural way. Now, an image like this is a great way to show the various uh, issues you can have with color banding. You might not push the colors as far as I am. You might say, this looks great, I'm gonna stop here. But even if you work that way, even if that's your style, the issues with color banding are still gonna come up in many different situations. So it's important to understand the issues here in a more obvious example so that you're aware with how to identify them and how to avoid them. Because even if you don't see the issues here, by the time you go to print the image or do further adjustments in Photoshop, you may bring out more of that color banding. And this is what it looks like. Let's take the red channel and just push it all the way to the right. And look what happened to the sky. We have this horrible, literal band of color in the sky. So what's happened here is that Lightroom has to define what red is. And it's basically said that the colors that were here are red. And then the colors around it sort of quickly fall off to we're not adjusting anything. So the red adjustment in the sky here does not look very nice and natural. Okay, let's turn that off. What happens if we play with the orange? Well, it's, it's done a little bit cleaner job, but it's still banding. The, the yellows in the center have not been adjusted. The reds above have not been adjusted. So it doesn't have such of a, a cartoonish, crazy edge to it, but it's still a pretty bad adjustment. So that's the underlying issue is Lightroom has defined these particular eight color channels that we have to work with. You can't redefine them here. When we jump over to Photoshop in a minute, you can redefine them here. But in Lightroom, we have eight different color sliders we can play with, so we have to work within it. The way that we do this, let's go back to that red scenario. Keep in mind that the way that colors tend to work in nature is that you get a spectrum. So color bleeds from one color to the next color on the color wheel. So next to red will be orange. So if we bring up the orange, we lose the color banding on this side of that adjustment. Above it, things still look weird. So we need to find the next color over from red. Well, you jump off the end of the sliders here. You can have to kind of start down at the bottom. So magenta is the next option. If I bring that up, we fill that in. And of course we had the yellow here. So we bring up the yellows. Now we fill that in. So the way that we avoid color banding in Lightroom is by moving multiple different sliders simultaneously. The question becomes how much and which sliders. So Let's look at a couple ways we can approach that. One would be simply to know which sliders are affected. And um, it's not too hard if you're working with sunsets like this, it's usually gonna be the same culprits, the yellows, oranges, reds, magentas, maybe purples. You're probably not gonna to wanna to punch up the blues too often. Greens won't be in the sky unless you're dealing with a rainbow. So it, with experience, it becomes a little more obvious, but if you're ever unsure, and maybe you're not working on a sky, maybe you're working on some other area of color, you can use this targeted adjustment tool you activate the tool and then just go click and drag up and that will find the underlying colors and adjust it. In this case, Lightroom thinks that there's about, uh, well, it, th it thinks that there's orange and red. 
So it's not exactly orange, it's not exactly red, it's somewhere in between, but a lot closer to orange than red. So it's moved both sliders. Now, why hasn't adjusted yellow? Well, we didn't click and drag there. So if I click and drag from yellow, now we fill in that yellow. And what about the magenta? If we click and drag up there, well, okay, it's identified the red. It hasn't done a very good job of identifying the magenta, which is there. So sometimes the target adjustment tool just won't pick up the color it needs to play with. So it's important to remember that the adjacent sliders are always key. So if I've adjusted red, but not magenta, I better think about adjusting magenta. And sure enough, you can see that fills things in. Okay, so that's how you identify which sliders you need to adjust. Now the question is how much? So let's go and zero things back out here and let's play with the orange because that seemed to be the dominant color. And what I want to do here is adjust the orange until the orange stuff is about where I want it. So maybe somewhere around in there. I'm going to make this a little bit vibrant and punchy. So around 50, let's bring up the reds until we get kind of a nice harmony and balance. Looks like they should be in a similar area. And let's bring up the magentas so they look nice and we'll bring up the yellows until it looks about right so i can just slide these one at a time that's one way of adjusting these another is this uh, a thing that i like to do with a lot of adjustments is just over adjust figure things out and then dial it back to the right amount so let's take the orange and just jack it all the way up to the maximum okay how do we get to uh, not having a gradient matching this i only want to push up the other colors as much as I need. So push the reds, reds, reds. Well, you really kind of have to push them all the way up. What about the yellows? Uh, maybe about halfway. If I keep pushing, I do want to have some uh, brightness here. So I don't want to oversaturate the yellows. And let's bring up the magentas. And it looks like we get rid of that banding by the time we're kind of halfway. So it looks like the general color relationship is orange and red move uh, a certain amount and the yellows and magentas should move half as much. So we can zero this out. We know that relationship. Just move the orange up until it looks about right. Again, we're about in that 50 zone. So we just move reds up to around 50. Move the yellows to about half that amount. Move the magentas to about half that amount. And notice I'm not being overly precise. You could type in the numbers, but that's not the point. The point is understand the color relationships. And by over adjusting, you can figure out what the right relationship is. But we've gone from here to here so now we have this nice, beautiful, glowing sky here, and we've done it in a way where there's no color banding, and we know there's no color banding. Even if we couldn't see it here, we know from over-adjusting that just moving the orange or red slider was going to be a problem. We really needed a little help from yellow and magenta to avoid banding up here or having kind of a hollowed-out center here, and definitely the reds on its own were just terrible. So let's jump over to Photoshop, and we'll work with this same image over there. So here's the same image uh, before we made any HSL adjustments to it in Lightroom. And we wanna make some similar adjustments here in Photoshop, but they're gonna be a little bit different because the tool is a little bit different in Photoshop. So first we need to create a hue saturation layer. And you'll notice a few differences between this tool and Lightroom right off the top. One is that it's kind of color channel specific versus having all the colors under hue, saturation, and lightness. But Everything's kind of here with the exception that we have six color bands here from reds through magentas. There's no orange, there's no purple. So there are more color options in Lightroom, but each color is a smaller slice of the color wheel. So Lightroom is more likely to create color banding if you don't work with multiple sliders, whereas Photoshop is gonna be a little bit less sensitive. The other difference here we'll show in a second is for each of these colors, you can actually redefine what they are. So that's awesome because you can't do that in Lightroom and in Photoshop. You can really tweak what it means to be magenta in an image. The other thing is we do have a master channel, so you can actually change the hue and lightness of the whole image. Not terrifically um, commonly useful. You can move saturation, of course, as a separate slider in, in Lightroom, but the option is there. So let's start with a similar approach. We'll click on the target adjustment tool and I'll just click and drag in this case to the right to bring that up. And notice here that Photoshop has identified that as reds and it has made this selection below showing us what it means to be red. And the way to read this selection is everything between the middle two markers is gonna be fully adjusted. So everything that's this shade of red is gonna get the full 
50 points of saturation adjustment. Everything outside the outer markers is not adjusted. So these shades of purple, any sort of blue or cyan or green, not adjusted at all. And then everything in between them is this transition zone. So we go from a fully adjusted red to a 50% adjusted orange to an unadjusted yellow. And that's where you get this natural smooth edges to your adjustments and that can help avoid color banding as well. It's not just what color you pick, but also having this smooth transition from adjusted to not adjusted, which helps hide any defects. And notice that when we move the red slider in Lightroom, we had that horrible banding in the sky, whereas in Photoshop, things just right off the bat look so much cleaner and smoother. It's not perfect. I can see that there's a little bit missing here. And maybe if we push the adjustment even further, you kind of see that point where there's some kind of you know chunky bands here. It's sort of unrealistic because once you start clipping the saturation, you're not getting that much of a relative view of things. But we can see that color banding in Photoshop is just much less likely to occur. We have uh, more generous color zones and this control here that's really gonna give us some power. So in this case, if I wanna make sure that this part of the sky is being adjusted, I could jump down to the magentas and play with the saturation there and see if I'm getting the, the adjustment I want. That's fine. But the way that it's much easier to do it, I'm gonna go back to the reds, that's where we had the original adjustment you can just redefine what's selected. So I can grab the magenta slider, move it out. So anything that's some sort of purple will be adjusted. And it's just gonna be a little bit adjusted because I've moved the outer marker. If I move the inner marker, we'll make sure that reds are more fully adjusted. The differences in the sky here, what I just did are very, very subtle. And that's typical of this tool. You may not see the difference on YouTube, but it slightly enhanced things. I didn't need to move it that much, but I think it was a helpful adjustment. Now the flip side of that is what should we do with these yellows? Can we bring back a little more yellow and, and should we really is, is part of the question. So let's bring out this yellow slider a little bit and I'm not seeing a lot of improvement in the yellows but I am seeing that these oranges are now getting more selected and they're getting over saturated. So what's happening is the yellow is not as saturated as the orange to start. So if we move both of them an equal amount, we're gonna cause some problems. So I'm going to undo that. I could deal with that problem in a couple of different ways. I could jump over to the yellows and try and bump up the saturation here. Notice that I'm affecting the oranges so I can try and redefine things. I can just bring in these sliders to try and skip those oranges. It's gonna be kind of hard to do. They're very, very close colors. So I'm not sure we're gonna really get the effect we want. And notice that we're also affecting this moss because it is in this yellow green zone here. I can try and bring that in, but these colors, this yellow and this yellow are actually very, very similar. This is not green, it's actually a yellow. So I'm not sure that I can really nail this part of the sky here without causing other problems. So I'm going to zero this out. And the way that I would approach this, I would either use a saturation mask with a tool like Lumenzia. If you've got that, you can just go in and you would use the, the vibrance or saturation mask to selectively target the amount of saturation and then adjust so you can separate things that have low saturation from high saturation. Or you could freehand paint with a mask to adjust that, or we can just accept the result. I think it actually looks pretty darn good here, so I wouldn't play with it too much, but when you have colors that are just too close together, you may not have all the control you need right in this tool. So be creative about using masks or multiple HSL adjustments in order to get where you want. Both of them are great tools for bringing up more color in your image. Just be mindful that you want to over-exaggerate things to check for banding. Make sure you understand if it's an issue, and if so, move additional sliders in Lightroom or redefine the color range with HSL adjustment layers in Photoshop so you can avoid that banding. Even if it's not obvious to your eyes, it will probably come out later in the process, so you'll really wanna get it right up front. Hope you enjoyed that. Please click subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you're notified of future tutorials like this. And drop me a line below in the comments. Let me know what else you'd like to see for future tutorials.